Thank you for tuning in to Macroview Television and welcome to a brand new edition of Taiwan Outlook, the program that presents the people and their stories on Taiwan. I'm your host, Ray Guo. For those of you who are interested in sounds, have you ever tried to find the, you know, the city and its people through the collection of sound? We're going to find out on today's program because we are delighted to have as our special guest, Mr. Kenneth Spateri, who's originally from the Republic of Malta, who's here as an artist in residence in Tainan. Welcome to our program, Kenneth. Hello. Hello. Hi. Okay. Well, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Like I said, you're originally from the Republic of Malta. Mm -hmm. But other than that, tell us a little bit about your, you know, upbringing and also your artwork. Sure. Well, in fact, I was born in Australia. My oh, parents really? are from from Malta. Malta. All right. But uh, they immigrated in the '70s, okay. and I was born in Australia. Good. So I spent a good part of my childhood there. Okay. Um, but we had, as a family, moved back to Malta on a couple of occasions when I was a child. Okay. So in fact, my first memories as a child were in, in Malta. All right. Um, in my late teens, I then traveled back to Malta and spent some time with my, my family. Good. And that's when I started spending more time in Europe, oh. I kind of traveling between Australia and Europe, generally to study. Okay. Theatre, because my first, my main job, if you okay. like, is as an actor. Yes. Okay. Um, and so I spent quite a lot of time in Europe studying, and then working in Australia as well mm. in my twenties. Okay. And then, f for the last ten years or so, okay. I've been based in Berlin, Berlin. in Germany, okay. where I've also continued to work as an actor and also as a dramaturg for okay. contemporary dance right. choreographers and dancers. Good. Multi-talented. Yes. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay. And Kenneth, let me ask you, this is not your first trip to Taiwan. No, no. no. You were here once before. But uh, what is your overall impression of the island? It's difficult for me to say, to give an overall impression, because it's every city I go to, although I haven't okay. been to that many, All right. but every district or city uh -huh. or, or place that I go to seems yes. to be incredibly different to the one that I had been before. Okay. Um, right. Last year I was in Kaohsiung. Yes. And I was there with a theatre company, a German theatre company, Familia Flirts, and that was the first time I came to Taiwan. Taiwan. Right. And we were performing at the uh, International mm -hmm. Spring Festival, the okay. theatre festival there. Right. And I had some time off after the, yes, the after performance. The yes. And on a friend's recommendation, mm -hmm. went to Tainan. Good. And was was really beautifully surprised. I, yeah. I just find that city uh -huh. really fascinating and okay. quite exciting. Right. Um, but then after my short, I was only there for about five days. Okay. And after that, I went and spent a few days in Taitong. Taitong. Good. So on your east coast, and yes. then I travelled very quickly up to the east coast back to Taipei. Okay. So my point is, these different places yes. had very, very different All right. feelings and atmospheres about them. Even the food seemed to be different it from, yes. from place to place. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I guess overall, it seems that Taiwan <laughs> is a very diverse okay. country with, right. with beautiful landscapes, but also very diverse cities. Yes, continuous supply of surprises. Yes, yes. absolutely. <laughs> All right. And Kenneth, let me ask you, this time you are an artist in residence mm -hmm. in Tainan, mm -hmm. but why did you pick Tainan? I mean, you could have gone back to Kaohsiung or you could have sure. gone to the East Coast, Sure. but you're only in Tainan, the first trip, you know, first time for just five days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But why Tainan? Well, time? like I said, I was, I was really captivated by this city. Okay. Um, I find it culturally, it's, it's, it's very, very interesting. And okay. from the little I know about Tainan, it was once the capital of Taiwan. Indeed. And it seems still to have a kind of, a, it, it is a kind of cultural capital in that mm -hmm. sense, that yes. it has a, a lot very of- Very much rich. That's culture. right, that's yes. right. And that, mm -hmm. that is really present in the city. Mm -hmm. But what I really like about it is that it's not obvious. Yes. Yes. You know, when you walk down the main streets, mm -hmm. it could be any other city probably yeah. in, in, in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. But once you sort of veer off those main streets and sort of take a bit of a risk and explore the little laneways, yes. that's when you're surprised and that's when you find the treasures in the city. 
you. Mm -hmm. And I really like that. Okay. I find that fantastic. Secondly, well, actually, most importantly, the people I found to be incredibly warm yes. and really curious, yes. like in that really positive way that people yes. approach you and yes. want to know where you're from and what you're doing there and why you're there. And, and I actually find that really, really warming. And I think yes. that's a really beautiful character, right. characteristic. And also, I have to say, <laughs> the food. Oh, OK. I you like really, the food. I really okay, like okay. tanning these food. Okay. Yeah, very much so. All right. So I guess those three elements mm -hmm. really uh, inspire or compelled me to want to, to find a way to go back. OK. Yeah. And the first time, Kenneth, you were in Taiwan, you were in Kaohsiung, mm -hmm. now you're in Tainan. Mm -hmm. So you seem to have you know, spent most of your time in southern parts of the island. Mm -hmm. And do you find southern Taiwan to be a bit different from other parts of the uh, island? For, again, for example, you've been to Taipei, mm -hmm. and then you've been to the east coast as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Do you think that has made you know, a difference in terms of your observation about the people, about the food, about the mm -hmm. culture, about how people communicate, whatever. Sure. What do you think? Uh, well, I actually haven't spent a great deal of time in Taipei, okay. so I can't really compare Tainan with my experience in other cities because, as you've mentioned, most yes. of my time has been yes. in Tainan. Taiwan. Yes. Um, I mean, Taipei feels like <laughs> many large cities, cities. feel. Yes. You know, it's fast, it's really, really dynamic, mm -hmm. things are really happening, it has that kind of we'll pulse fast, about it. Yes. There is a kind of generic big city feel about it, okay. which oh, I, I also find exciting. Yes. But I mm -hmm. guess Tainan has something a little more intimate yes. about it in its okay. size and also in the way people communicate. Okay. Um, I have noticed, again, a difference in the food. Yes. Like Tainanese food, does seem a lot sweeter, mm -hmm. and I, I actually understand now a little bit about the history yes, about that and why that is. Uh -huh. But I've also been told that it's not just Tainan itself that has its own distinct cuisine, but every district seems to have its own Indeed. cuisine and variety of, of foods. Mm -hmm. I haven't yet had the opportunity to explore them, but <laughs> okay. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And your East Coast, well, like I said, I was in Taitong, yes. spent a little bit of time in Dulan and then in Chong Kong. Chong Kong. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just magnificent. Yes. I just find that combination of rainforest mm -hmm. and ocean just a really yeah. beautiful combination a and very, quite breathtaking. Yes, a very good combination yeah. in terms of, you know, for visitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let me ask you, I mean, in terms of traveling around the island a little bit, what do you think about the cultural richness and the diversity? Because as you know, you know, before coming here, you must have known that Taiwan was, you know, once occupied by the Dutch mm -hmm. and then also under the Japanese rule mm -hmm. for about 50 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had, you know, mainland China influence, Japanese influence, mm -hmm. and part, you know, from European influence through the Dutch. So do you think that's still somewhat evident, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of the exposures that you had or the observation that you have made that Taiwan does have that underlying richness of the different cultures that he was exposed to during his history. Yes, well, I guess in Tainan, it's a, I don't know what it's like in other cities in okay. Taiwan, but in mm -hmm. Tainan, that becomes obvious through yes. its architecture. Yes. I mean, you see it in the, the, the buildings that were built by the Japanese. Mm -hmm. You also see traces of it yeah. from, er, from, from earlier history, mm -hmm. um, through, th through the Dutch period, and also in Anping, for example. Yes, you see it's, it's, a lot, it's, a, it's a lot more evident. What I find really interesting is that Malta has had a very similar history. Malta, right. because of where it is mm -hmm. in, in, in the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. has always been a very important mm -hmm. strategic yes. uh, place to have. Yeah. And so it has also a very long history of colonization yeah. f from, you know, dating back, I think, sort of 3,000 years ago from the yeah. Phoenicians, mm. then the Romans, okay. the Greeks, <laughs> yes. the Spanish, the French. Yeah. Everybody the, had the their English. footprints. Exactly. Yes. And you kind of still see traces, yeah, traces of that, yeah. similar, similar to how you yeah. see that in Tainan. In Taiwan. Okay. Yeah. And this time, you know, when you're in Taiwan, one thing that you have experienced, probably not on the original expectation, is the earthquake that we yeah. experienced on February 6th. 
And uh, tell us a little bit about the feelings that you had, because you don't get earthquakes in, uh, you know, in Malta, I don't mm, suppose. No, no. Yes, and this is not a small earthquake, you no. know, scale six. So uh, tell me, you know, what was going through your mind and how did you respond? Well, I guess like most people, yeah. I was in bed yes. sleeping because it happened at about Were you four awakened by it? Yes, okay. yes, it was. I can't imagine sleeping through something. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was quite a... Yes. It, you were, I mean, I was shaken, yes. out, of, uh, shaken out of my sleep. Um, I, I guess... I mean, sure, I was mm -hmm. scared. I have actually experienced an earthquake before. Oh, really? In a very similar situation. I was working in Wellington in New Zealand, and Wellington has, is, of course, is quite yeah, earthquake it's prone. prone to, yes. and, um, and it was a very similar situation. It was about two or three in the morning. Okay. So I was wake, woken up by it. Okay. But it, was, it wasn't as strong. No. And I think that's what kind of struck me. That yes. It kind of, it began and then it seemed to die out and I thought, okay, it's just a bit of a tremor. And yes. of course I knew and I was aware that Taiwan is quite prone to earthquakes, yes. but then it seemed to continue yes. and kind of escalate a bit. And that's why I thought, oh, wow, this is actually quite it's serious. Quite serious. Mm -hmm. I mean, lucky for me, the area that I was in didn't seem to suffer a great deal of damage at all. Good. And what was actually quite surreal, because a friend of mine, a friend of mine rang me and warned me of aftershocks. Oh, yes. And um, what was quite surreal is there were aftershocks and they drove me outside again. There didn't seem to be anyone reacting <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the same way yeah. I was. Yes. And at about six o'clock in the morning, when mm. I went for a walk again, it just felt like a very normal mm -hmm. Yeah, day. normal day, yes. And people mm. seemed to be getting on with their lives and I thought, well, maybe I overreacted, you know. No. I'm in Taiwan, the Tainanese and the Taiwanese are probably yes. very familiar with this. Mm. But it wasn't until I turned on the television yeah, and watched the news that I actually saw yeah. the severity of of yes. what had happened and it was quite sad and also mm -hmm. obviously with Chinese New Year yeah. happening right directly corner, after yes. it, mm -hmm. it it did make a difference to how the Tainanese celebrated or actually didn't yes. really celebrate the, no. Tainani, uh, the Chinese New Year. Yeah, yeah. I've heard yeah. the Tainanese are a big party yes. people yeah. and mm -hmm. you didn't get that feeling this year. Not this year. No, no. and okay. also I mean a lot of I think a lot of businesses suffered, you know, and not just mm -hmm. hotels that had perhaps cancellations, yes. but also mm -hmm. for many, many days, many districts, even in the district I was in, okay. um, suffered water shortages yes. or no water at all. Right. So that really did kind of change the atmosphere yeah, of the we're Chinese. Happy that you, you are okay. Yes, yes. So well, and many others. Okay. Yeah. Kenneth, what well, we're talking about your experiences in Taiwan, you know, the first experience, the earthquake that you had, and then the, also you mentioned because of the earthquake that people really didn't, you know, celebrate Chinese New Year as much. But let me ask you, the, you know, the earthquake, of course, is an unexpected tragedy, but uh, you are ongoing project, you know, in Tainan, you know, can you tell us a little bit about the project itself, mm -hmm. and that you have been collecting sounds mm -hmm. that are representative of the city of Tainan, or some of which are representative of Taiwan in general. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the sounds that you have collected. Sure. I don't know if the sounds that I've represented, I don't know if they're representative of okay. Tainan or All Taiwan. Right. Again, right. I haven't been here long enough to be able to actually make oh, that judgment. Very modest. I guess the the process has been very simple. Okay. I spent the first three or four weeks of my residency okay. basically walking around with my recording machine okay. and just walking around the city and collecting sounds, collecting conversations, mm. things that happened. Okay. Tainan is quite a colorful city also, yes. and it seemed to be that the period that I was there, there were often festivals or street parades mm. or some sort of music happening, yes. and quite unexpectedly or without me necessarily planning or having sort of seeking those things out. Okay. Um, so I didn't necessarily plan no a particular series of sounds or I didn't really plan what sounds I wanted to collect and how I wanted to use them before I had them. Okay. After a period of time I then kind of listened through the work and decided on creating eight different works. Okay. 
Half of those works, I use only the sounds that I collected, okay. and I remix them in a particular way that works on a particular theme, if oh. you like. Right. For example, uh, there's one particular road in Tainan called Minsu Ru, yeah. and it just seemed to be that every time I was on this road, there seemed to be someone with a megaphone uh -huh. selling something. Okay. And so I used that as a theme to hold that work together and mix those pieces together. Um, and then I would say there would be another three or four of the works where I've used an original recording mm -hmm. that I've taken, for example, of a train. So I was on a train that went from the high-speed rail station yes. mm -hmm. to the main station in, in Tainan. Okay. And it seems like it's quite an old train and it has, that makes that great rickety, creaky sounds, you know. Okay. So yeah. I recorded that and I used that as a base upon which I then composed a small piece of music and also sang on top of. Okay. And so there are about three or four works that I do that with that I I, I use the recordings as a base and then write on top of it. Mm -hmm. And I would say the other four are pure recordings that I've remixed and re-edited without me necessarily adding anything else on top. Okay. And uh, in the process, what were some of the things that you have discovered? Whether it's through the collection of sounds that you made or through conversation with people. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we understand this is only your second visit to Taiwan mm -hmm. and you haven't really been, you know, talking to a lot of people, haven't really traveled that extensively around the island. But based on the project itself, mm -hmm. did you think it was a very effective avenue for you to get to know Tainan? to get to know the people of Taiwan. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. More than I had expected. Okay. I mean, again, I guess there's that wonderful curiosity that the mm. Tainanese have, maybe the Taiwanese in general, that mm. if you're standing in a street with a recording machine, yes. people will approach you and ask you what you're doing in a very friendly way. Yeah, yeah. And, and quite often I found when I explained to them what it was that I was doing, that I was collecting sounds and mm -hmm. trying to put together some sort of map Okay. I, well, actually, it's not really a map in a dry sense. It's okay. my, my reflection on what I was seeing in yes. various parts of Tainan. Okay. And when I explained that, mm -hmm. they, would, they would then, in, their, in a very proud and wonderful way, mm -hmm. want to advise me on where else I could go for yeah. particular sounds. Okay. And I found that really interesting, that Tainanese seem to be very proud of their city. Yes. So when I yes, said indeed. I was doing a map of their city, mm. they really wanted to be involved in sharing their city with me. Okay. And I think that's a really beautiful and yes, endearing indeed. quality. Yes. You know? And I think there's a lot to be proud of. Yes. The project that you are doing, it's titled The Sound Map of Tainan. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. Among the, the people that you talk to, among the sounds that you have already collected, mm -hmm. what were some of the sounds that you found that were quite unique because you've done quite a bit of international traveling mm -hmm, before coming mm -hmm, to Taiwan, mm -hmm. you know many parts of you know uh, Europe, mm -hmm. you know, and also in Australia and New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would be some of the things, you know, uh, some of the sounds that you have already discovered that seem to be fairly unique to Tainan or to Taiwan? Sure. Um... Well, I found that the festival sounds incredibly yes. unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are sounds that I hadn't heard before and okay. quite um, colourful and yeah. bright. And there's really that sense. And it, it, like I said earlier, mm -hmm. it wasn't just there wasn't just one small period no. in which festivals were happening. They seem okay. to be happening nearly every week. <laughs> yes. you know? There'd be a firework and then yes. some sort of parade. And these sounds were very new to mm -hmm. me. Okay. You know, the crashing of cymbals, the particular the particular wind instruments that they that were being used. I mean, that was very very new for me. Mm -hmm. um, I guess there were also, I have to say, the, there's that ever-present scooter sound, yes. you know, <laughs> you yes, could probably I would imagine, get yes. all around Taiwan. Yeah, exactly. Um, but that was something that I discovered after, sort of my, in, in my second week of being in, in Tainan and recording and listening, I thought, wow, in nearly every recording mm -hmm. I have, okay. there's a sound of a scooter. Yes, <laughs> you yes. Know? Yeah. So I guess that must be a, a, mm -hmm. a, a, something that, unique. Yes, well, at least something very present in yes. the city. Yes, yeah. and also, Kenneth, we know that the, the, the sound works that you're doing now, 
as part of this you know, uh, project. And it's also going to be you know, presented and an exhibition mm -hmm. is going to be in a CD mm -hmm. you know, for the public to, you know, to share, to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us you know, what, what, what's on the agenda for more and more people to learn about your, your, your art mm -hmm. and also to enjoy the works that you produce? Mm -hmm. Well, the exhibition, in, in terms of the exhibition, yes. we are presenting the works. Actually, that was a really big question when it came to how do you present sound? Yes. And something that mm -hmm. I spoke a lot with, with our curator of the gallery, Ethan Hugh, okay. and also the manager, how do we present sound? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's, you know, I, I, I wasn't really interested in creating a sound installation as no. such uh -huh. or working with objects I really just wanted people to listen okay. so we are we are actually printing off a series of QR codes okay. in the gallery oh, and okay. people will bring their They'll smartphones okay. and their own headphones okay. and basically scan each QR code which is then uh, and each QR code is then would link you to one of the particular eight works so that's kind of we thought the best way to create some sort of intimacy that people can really listen to them mm -hmm. these works quietly and in their own space and in their own time okay. so that's the exhibition oh, but like you said we'll also be printing and releasing a cd of okay. the eight works so that mm -hmm. if people are interested in okay. owning a copy or people that aren't in tainan are interested okay. in listening to the works they also have the possibility okay and kenneth we said at the beginning of the program that you are into many different you know area you know, areas of art, mm -hmm. you know, for example, theater, you know, acting mm -hmm. and other things. Uh, why did you pick sound art mm -hmm. as part of your or the majority of your program here in Taiwan? Mm -hmm. uh, what was the aspect of sound art mm -hmm. that really attracted you the most? Sure. Um, music has always been a really strong aspect of mm -hmm. my, I studied music when I was a child okay. and also throughout my career as an actor, I've often played roles that required some sort of musicianship, singing, singing, singing okay. or playing instruments. So it's always kind of it's been always there, there yes. as a companion. <laughs> and in the last few years, I've actually started to write music um, with a partner Ooh, in terrific. Berlin. And so we've actually started, that's kind of been a growing focus. Okay. So when the opportunity came to come back to Tainan to present something as an okay. artist, mm. I thought, well, you know, I'm quite used to or actually have had many, many opportunities to travel and work as an actor and a performer. I wasn't really that interested in performing a work as a solo artist. I've done that before and it's not something that particularly interests me right now. So I thought sound might be a really, really interesting way to actually come back as an artist and an interesting medium for me to work in because it is relatively new for me not in terms of music but in terms of working with sound and creating soundscapes okay. so it was for me a challenge and also it was something that i felt was practical and doable with regards to an exhibition context mm -hmm. okay and uh, so far in terms of the collection of sounds that you have made mm -hmm. were there anything that maybe your partner in uh, you know europe or other places have really said to you hey this is something kind of unexpected we didn't we didn't you know expect this at, at all mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. has that been their our reaction yet I think so. I think there have been a couple of, <laughs> of pieces that yes. they've thought, wow, that's not something, yeah, like you said, that they, yeah. they expected. There's yes. one piece on a, on a train, like I mentioned, I've recorded a, a train and oh, worked okay. on top of that. And another piece um, where I recorded a particular chant okay. and chanting and also sang on top of that. So these works, I think, are unexpected because the sounds themselves are perhaps not as familiar no. here, there mm. as they would be here. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you, you were you know, also saying that while you were collecting sounds in different parts of the city, that you often meet people, that people all you know, talk to you, they share their stories and things. I'm gonna ask you then, if it's okay and you found some stories to be interesting that you can share with us here today on the program. I guess there would be two main stories. I mean, there would be less stories and more events. It's more has to do with the, the context of where I was recording that I found really fascinating. Okay. Uh, the first would be 
the the Anping fish markets. Oh, okay. I was advised to go there because of the sounds, obviously. Okay. And I went there at two or three in the morning, because okay. that was the time. That's the time where yeah, the fish active. actually yes. come in and mm -hmm. they're being unpacked and cleaned. And that was just incredible. It was just the energy in this enormous warehouse space mm -hmm. was just a, a really fascinating mm -hmm. how the fish were treated yes. the, the energy of how they were sold the communication between people okay. the kind of different the different voices and through which the, this, these fish were being sold how mm. they were packed it was that was really really fascinating particularly you know when you think it was two between two and three in the morning yes. and this is where this place seems to be most alive yeah, and vibrant, these, yes. exactly and these mm. people is probably it's the the peak of their day in terms of energy mm. just that sense of walking into that from the quiet of night and then walking out of it again into the early morning. Mm. That, was, that was quite an experience. Mm. Um, I guess in terms of people I met, uh, there was one gentleman I met in a park okay. who I, whose story I found quite fascinating. He had spent, um, he was Tainanese, but okay. spent some years in, in the States okay. learning English, uh, but seemed to be from a relatively poor okay. background. Oh, yeah. And he just told of his experiences there in the park Helping other, helping homeless people, um, but he just had this very humble, and he had this particular wisdom that I found very, very touching, mm -hmm. and and that was that was a very special experience, I have mm -hmm. to say. Okay. So there are parts of he let me interview him, and there are parts of that interview that I've used to create a, a workaround. Okay. Um, so that was quite interesting, and I guess the other interview-like piece that I did is actually about the connection between Anping and a particular a particular area in mm -hmm. Tainan called the Five Channel okay. District or the Five Channel area, mm -hmm. which used to be, uh, uh, how do we say, I, I would guess a sort of pathway from and ping into the city, city. Yes. To, to deliver goods on. Yes. There were basically five channels, water channels yes. that we used to deliver goods into, the city. into the city. city. Yes. And there are just some, I guess, more historical um, comments on how that happened yes. and, and locating that in the, in, actu in the actual city of Tainan. Okay. And uh, given the fact that you're able to you know, expose, be exposed to all these different sounds, were you able to discover, you know, behind maybe not just the stories, but maybe the history, or you know, maybe the lifestyle, or even the culture mm -hmm. of the people in Tainan or also of Taiwan? Mm -hmm. you know, for example, you mentioned about the fish market. Mm -hmm. you know, it certainly shows that you know Tainan used to be a very important you know city or port mm -hmm. you know, that did not just the political economic center but also in terms of you know everyday goods you know delivery for people's livelihood the quality of life mm -hmm. you know, what were the what would be some of the other aspects that you're able to discover from these sounds well I guess again sort of staying on that theme of food yeah. okay I mean, the the Food is just seems to be such an, in, an inherent yes. and mm -hmm. absolutely important aspect mm -hmm. of Tainanese and I suspect Taiwanese culture okay. in, general. in general. And I found the accessibility to food to be quite extraordinary mm -hmm. um, in that it's not something that you do, food doesn't seem to be something you do alone nor does it necessarily seem to be something you do hidden away in a restaurant. No. It's very much on the street. And life is very much about being shared on the street, mm -hmm. both in terms of buying mm -hmm. and selling fresh produce yes. or fish, mm -hmm. or, and also consuming food, consuming ready-made food. Yes. The amount of food stalls or food stands or food booths, I'm not sure how you would, how you would actually call that in English, mm -hmm. these kind of air, noodle bars yes. and so on that you yeah. find on the street, yeah. almost literally, mm -hmm. I find that to be really, really interesting because okay. it does create a kind of, mm -hmm. uh, how would you say, a, a space in which people share yeah. experience. Mm -hmm. 
similarly through markets. Yeah. I mean, Tainan itself has quite a few major markets that seem to still be operating mm -hmm. in a very healthy way. Yes. And that again seems to create a particular energy and a particular way in which people communicate mm -hmm. that's, that's more vibrant than I guess you would experience in a normal supermarket. <laughs> you know? And I think that creates an energy and that creates a space with which, in which people communicate very differently. Okay. So that, you know, I found that to be really interesting. All right. And uh, even though most of the people I'm sure that Kenneth you have met were friendly or very approachable, but let me ask you, were there ever times of you know, difficulties for you when you try to collect sounds or you know, maybe uh, listening to you know, whatever people were doing, maybe you know, chopping meat on the board and things, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and people were not very you know, receptive mm -hmm. to what you were doing. Did you ever have moments of difficulties while you were doing your work? I, I expected there to be. <laughs> okay. I, I really did because I, mean, I guess I, I can imagine that people don't like to be intruded upon. Yeah. Although I sort of made sure that I wasn't really yeah. entering a private space. space. And I wasn't recording mm -hmm. events and I wasn't interested in recording mm -hmm. events that were uncomfortable, okay. that were going to make people uncomfortable. Okay. But I had expected possible small conflicts or at least questioning that was a little bit hostile, but it never happened. Good. Never. Good there wasn't a single moment where people approached me in a way that was unfriendly or that was obvious to me that they didn't want to be recorded or okay. they weren't interested. It actually never happened. On the contrary, mm -hmm. it was always, you know, what are you doing? Oh, okay, come in or <laughs> let me show you this or how about that? Okay. So, no, actually, okay. that, that was never an issue. Good for you. And Kenneth, how about just going beyond just the city of Tainan? Mm -hmm. Do you have any plans, maybe, for example, going to Kaohsiung again, mm -hmm. or maybe going up northward, you know, to Yunling, to Jiayi? Yes. Uh, have you, yes. you know, those plans in the works? Yes, I'm planning to go with someone I met in Tainan, okay. to, who owns a tea shop, to Taichung. Okay, Taichung. Where yes. one of her suppliers, who owns a tea farmer, is very interested in sharing her experience in the cultivation of tea. Okay. But we're also, there, there is a particular indigenous or a native tribe that okay. live in that area who I suspect whose language and whose songs and culture is perhaps starting to die out. Okay. And so mm -hmm. we, I will be going there to do some recordings of their songs and. Mm -hmm and speech and language, okay. um, which I find really, really exciting. I think that's really, really important work of course. So that, that, that I'm really looking forward to. And, um, and then I'll be going to Taitong for some days just okay. to enjoy yeah. your forest. The natural be <laughs> you know, beauty of the place. Exactly. And let me ask you, you being exposed to some selection of sounds in Taiwan, especially in Tainan, if I were to ask you, I don't know if this is a fair question, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to ask you about a sound or, you know, a sound or two that's representative or that's a symbol of Taiwan that you can introduce you to your friends back home mm -hmm. or in any other parts of the world, what would it be and why? Look, I don't actually think there would be one particular sound okay. that, would, that would necessarily uh, encapsulate my experience okay. of, of the city. I think, you know, like I said, there were the sounds that really I found quite compelling mm -hmm. and they were often sounds that I w was unfamiliar with, like particular festival sounds, yes. the particular instruments that we used and also that sort of crashing of cymbals that, yes. that really kind of makes you pay attention. Yeah, of course. Um, so that I would say is perhaps something that, that was for me indicative of my time there okay. and also because it was always attached to colour. You know, these festivals are incredibly colourful. Colourful, yes. So there's always a very strong visual mm -hmm. association. Okay. Like I said, the scooter sound, yes. I guess, is, it's a very ever-present and very real, mm -hmm. everyday aspect of Tainanese and I suspect Taiwanese Wanese culture. In general, yes. Um, and that's just how people get around here. Mm -hmm. You know, and so okay. I guess that would be perhaps quite symbolic of, okay. of particularly the urban landscapes in yes. Taiwan. Yes, indeed.
I guess they would be my main two. Okay. Finally, for this part of the program, that Kenneth, if you know, in addition to traveling to other parts of the country, uh, would would there be any particular like you know building or structure that maybe you want to visit next? You know, during the remainder of your stay in Taiwan, you know, for example, going to temples, mm -hmm. schools, government buildings, mm -hmm. or museums. What, what do you have any particular, you know, just targets, you know, physical targets sure. that you, you may want to visit next? Sure. Well, I have to say, within the city of Tainan itself, mm -hmm. I've actually done a, I haven't done a great deal of visiting. Okay. Well, that's actually okay. a good question. So there are go. quite a few museums in, yes. Tain, in mm. Tainan I want to okay. visit. There's a very beautiful looking building. I think it's the, the Museum of Literature, Yes. which seems quite interesting. Yeah. So I'd be really interested in visiting that. Okay. I have visited already quite a few temples okay. and also not just for recordings, but also throughout the Chinese New Year period. So good, I'm quite good. familiar with the temples in okay. my area right. and that's great. Um, but I would say outside of the urban landscapes, yeah. uh -huh. I'm also very interested in experiencing and visiting your natural landscapes. Like I said, the forest, I'm very much looking forward to uh -huh. going into the heart of Taiwan, okay. into the mountains and then onto your east coast. Because I actually, from my experiences last mm. year. I'll guarantee you that's going to be exciting. Yeah, yes. absolutely. <laughs> it's quite yes. breathtaking. Kenneth, we're being, you know, talking and sharing your experiences, you know, as an artist in residence in Taiwan. And tell us a little bit about your beautiful home country of Malta. You know, for those of us, for most of us, I would suppose, in Taiwan, we know very little about your home country. And then uh, we know it's a place of, you know, rich history. Uh, rich architecture. Mm -hmm. yeah, there are many, you know, you know, like you said, many years, uh, centuries mm -hmm. of different, you know, uh, countries mm -hmm. occupying your home country. Mm -hmm. And then certainly it has made it a very attractive place for a lot of people who are interested in architecture, archaeology, and also just plain being a tourist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us a little more about your country. Sure. Please. Sure. Well, as you mentioned, I mean, Malta has a, an incredibly long history. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, there, are, there are a series of temples around Malta and Gozo. Malta is actually made up of three islands, okay. I should say, first. Yes. There's the main island, Malta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a very, very small island, which okay. is called Camino, okay. and a slightly larger than the smaller island okay. called Gozo. But the main two islands are Gozo and Malta. Okay. And on both those islands, there are temples okay. that some archaeologists have mm -hmm. dated back to four to 5,000 BC. Oh. So that would be about you know, six, 7,000 years old. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and they're still standing and they're, they're quite mm -hmm. magnificent. So yes. if, if mm -hmm. you think of that as a kind of starting, vague starting okay. point for Maltese history and, and okay. archaeology, mm -hmm. then there's an incredible wealth and richness. Yes. So you're right, for people that are interested in architecture, for mm -hmm. people that are in interested in archaeology, mm -hmm. it's a fascinating and very rich place. Okay. Also diverse. Um, so you have these particular temples, prehistoric, mm -hmm. and then you move into sort of a period of Roman architecture and Roman civilization, which still has left its mark on the island in various places and in various forms. And then you start going, moving into sort of a Norman period and uh, um, the Arab period, because Malta was also um, an Arab island mm -hmm. for quite some years. In fact, that's where the Maltese language actually has its stem. Okay. The Maltese language is a, is a Semitic language, oh. so it has its roots and, and yes. sounds very much like an Arab, Arab. language. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And then moving along, and, and all of these, uh, I guess, in all of these periods, there is some sort of architectural leftover or okay. mark on the island. Okay. Um, and then after the Arab period, you have a period, I think the Spanish were there for some time, and then you have I think Napoleon was there for two years, yes. you know, mm -hmm. and I, like I said, in, in, in all of these periods, there's mm -hmm. a very strong mark left. But I think the most okay. distinctive mark that was made okay. would have been in the 16th century. Okay. And that's when the Knights of St. John, oh, okay. the uh, Christian Crusaders, yes. were in Malta. Mm -hmm. 
and, and really, really started to create a kind of very strong sense of civilization with very strong networks, with very, very strong architecture. And it was actually them who built and created mm -hmm. the now capital city of Malta, Valletta. Okay. Okay. And that has a very strong mm -hmm. Baroque, okay. heavy feel about it. And okay. that was built by, okay. by the Knights. Okay. We also learned that there are a few very interesting centers for the artists. Mm -hmm. you know, for example, you have the St. James Center for creativity, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and suppose that we had conversation before the taping started. You also worked there mm -hmm. at one time. Yes, that's right. Tell us a little bit about those. So yes. I worked there last year, and oh, it was a piece okay. that was commissioned by the Arts Council of Malta. It was a new Good. work, uh, a physical theatre work, okay. uh, where I collaborated with um, a Swiss art, a Swiss performer and two, three Maltese artists, and we created a, a, a new work that performed in that space. That's terrific. Uh, um, yes. There are many, many spaces in Malta that I think are really, really interesting, not necessarily performance spaces, okay. just spaces that have a very, very rich history and that aren't necessarily churches or places of worship. Okay. Um, and I think they are of, of value and are okay. certainly worth visiting. Uh, certainly going to put it on the near the top of my agenda Good. in terms of traveling next. Good. <laughs> All right. We also understand since you know Malta is very rich in history and culture, uh, also in the arts. Uh, it's going to be holding the seventh World Summit on Arts and Culture this mm -hmm. year in 2016 uh, during the period of October 18th to October 21st. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a huge event. Mm -hmm. Can you then tell us a little bit about you know, the significance of the Seventh World Summit on Arts and Culture mm -hmm. to artists all over the world? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Is it a you know, very important occasion for artists mm -hmm. all over the world to gather together? It's actually more mm -hmm. about arts councils. These government organizations have I, I don't know how long they've actually had this federation, but they formed a federation some time ago, and every two or three years they meet. Mm -hmm. So this event this year is being hosted in Malta. Okay. And I guess it's important, well, it's important for Malta in the sense that I think it is an international summit. So yes. arts councils from a, around the world, particular arts councils outside of Europe yeah. that perhaps aren't familiar with Malta and mm -hmm. don't really have a kind of idea or image of what Malta is, mm -hmm. will actually be able, through um, participating in this event in Malta, have some idea of the state of the art, in, of state of arts in Malta, okay. and also what it is as an island. So from that point of view, I think it's great. Okay. I think the, the, the event is really important in that okay. it brings together arts councils from around the world to share their experiences, mm -hmm. to share their policies, to maybe draw upon different resources so that um, hopefully through meetings like this, funding and support for the arts and artists themselves continues to grow or develop in a way that is healthy. Okay. Do you plan to be part of the summit this year? I don't, but okay. I know many people from the Arts Council of Malta that are, and I think it's fantastic okay. and I think it's great. All right. And uh, we also know that even though Malta is very rich in history, culture and the arts, uh, kind of, you know, away from Taiwan, you know, in terms of physical distance. And also the fact is that there isn't really a whole lot of people to people exchanges mm -hmm. at the present moment. Mm -hmm. What would you that recommend as mm -hmm. a, you know somebody originally from Malta but has you know spent a significant amount of time in Taiwan now? Mm -hmm. uh, how can the two sides try to improve and enhance our relationship? Mm -hmm. You know whether it's through arts or wh whatever. Please. Well, I would say the, the exchange programs well, okay. or residencies like mm -hmm. the one I'm on here are okay. of enormous value, oh, yes. and I think tying that in with this event that's happening, this internet, this conference that's happening in Malta. You know, if arts councils get together, mm -hmm. for example, if the arts council of Malta and the arts council from Taiwan oh, got yes. together to create some sort of way in which artists can develop an exchange over a 
longer period of time. Mm -hmm. For example, that Taiwanese artists may also have the opportunity to spend two or three months or significant periods of time working in Malta, yes. perhaps doing something like I did here or something completely exactly. different. Mm -hmm. And that there are Maltese artists coming here. I think through creating work as mm -hmm. a foreigner in another country yes. and responding to that environment, that creates the possibility of dialogue. When people ask me where I was from, where I'm from, mm -hmm. and I say Malta, and most people kind of look at me questioningly <laughs> think, where is that? Yes. That already creates a link of some sorts. Okay. And through that curiosity, I think, that can develop relationships in a really positive way. Okay. So I think the arts are a wonderful way in which that can be done and, okay. and exchange programs okay. and hopefully at some point some sort of collaborations would yes. be really, really wonderful, wonderful. where you have yes. Maltese arts organisations or mm -hmm. companies or artists directly collaborating with Taiwanese on particular issues that perhaps they both find relevant, social or political issues, mm -hmm. and that these works are then created together and performed or showed or produced in both these countries. I think that would be a really wonderful thing. All right. And Kenneth, my final question is, one day that when you go back to Malta, you're going to have friends and family ask you, hey, how was your stay in Taiwan? Mm -hmm. If I were to ask you for that one thing that you're going to share with the people back home, what would it be? You know, why? You know, what, what would be that one thing you want to share with people back home and let them know this is Taiwan? I would say the warmth and curiosity of the people. I mean, that, that's, the, the, that's perhaps what's created the strongest impression yes. for me. All right. And obviously the fantastic food. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, certainly, you know, it being a you know, pleasure to have you on the program Thank today, you. Kenneth. I want to wish you all the best for the remainder of your Artists in Residence program here in Taiwan. Uh, certainly looking forward to, you know, learn more about your, you know, artworks when they become available for the public. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks right. for having me. All right. Thank you for watching our program today. I'll see you next time on Macroview Television. Thank you.